Perfect. Thank you so much. Hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build studio in New York City. The uh, supernatural thriller, Midnight, Texas, which is based on the best-selling book series by uh, Charlene Harris, incidentally, author of the novels that inspired True Blood. The show, it takes us on a journey into a remote Texas town where nothing is what it seems. In season one, our friends successfully more or less prevented a total collapse of the veil between the living and hell. And as we enter season two, we are poised for even more supernatural craziness as the threat to midnight migrates from below the ground to their backyard. Uh, joining me in just a few short moments, the cast of Midnight Texas is here. Make some noise. Francois Arnon is here. Parisa Fitzhenley is here. Ariel Kebble is here. Jason Lewis is here. Peter Mensa is here. How do we feel? Huh? How do we feel? These are cool people. And they're here. Very excited. Uh, we're going to get them all out in just a second. But before we do, I believe we have a quick look at season two. So let's go ahead and run that clip. People don't just settle down at midnight. They come here when they're running from someone or they got something to hide. Good old mother in heaven, my Lord. All of us are here because some part of us doesn't fit in anywhere else. <sighs> I'm Patience Lucero. My husband Kai and I own the hotel. Your hotel is haunted. Well, I know, that, but you can see him? Don't come in. I'll be fine. Thanks for not listening to me. Oh, I never listen. Just ask my husband. <laughs> Whatever's happening is supernatural. Someone's in trouble. We need the big guns. I don't want to lose you right after we finally found each other. If anything happens, get the hell out. Midnight is a special place. Oh, yes, it is. I know you guys are about to make a crazy amount of noise. Join me in welcoming from Midnight, Texas, Francois Arnon, Paris Vincentli, Ariel Kebble, Jason Lewis, and Pete Mensa. Yes. All of them. Right here. Come on, come on, come on. All right, all right. Uh, season two, my goodness, congratulations. How awesome. Uh, thank you. So Fantastic. exciting, so exciting. Uh, thank you for, for being here and hanging out with us. Uh, I'm stoked to kind of dive in and talk to you all about the fun parts of making it and everything that's gone into the show. But uh, first, I saw you guys were, you just out of Comic-Con. You were just there, right? New York yeah. Comic-Con? Very exciting. I, I love talking to people after they've been to Comic-Con. Was I don't think it was, I mean, you guys were all there for uh, season one as well. You did that once before. So it was nobody's first time, right? No? Okay, good. My it was your first New York Comic Con. Yeah, we did San Diego uh, this summer. You did San Diego over yeah. the summer. What was your first New York Comic Con like? How, what? Well, it's not my first con. It was my okay. first New York Con. Just first New York Con. Yeah. Is there a different vibe at the New York Con? Was it? Dude, it was civilized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they're all exhausting in like yeah. the best way possible. Totally. There's so much energy, and it's incredible. But it's like. A whirlwind of energy. Yeah. For once, we're we're not wearing the costumes. True, <laughs> exactly. That is true. You are you you just you're yourselves, and you're uh, amongst all of this chaos and excitement and energy. I imagine that to be physically and emotionally draining. That's got to be a rough thing to do. And I also got a lot of that. ideas for Halloween costumes. Oh, I want to get into that. Actually. It's 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 draining, but you know what? You're so grateful that people love what you do. You know, we're yeah. so we're pretty fortunate. You know, the show is coming back. What is essentially Halloween weekend? I mean, it is. It's yeah. Halloween weekend, which is perfect timing. Uh, I'm very excited for that. Uh, you just mentioned Halloween costumes. I gotta, I gotta figure working on this show, being a part of the show. If you weren't a fan of Halloween, you certainly must be by now, and it must be a great time of year. Uh, was that the case for anybody? Were you already into this kind of world before you ever became a part of Midnight Texas? Were you a fan of Supernatural? Were you a fan of Halloween? Let's go around. Well, let's put it this way: It's not my first vampire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he's a little different, but he's not my first. Yeah, he's a little different. Yeah, for sure. Anybody else? Love this world. I mean, yeah. uh, I think genre fantasy stuff in general is some of the best storytelling because it frees you up in terms of rules. So yeah. the things we get to do, you, you don't get to do on a family drama. <laughs> But we are a family. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're a family a who might rip your kind of head up from your shoulders. Yeah. Slightly dysfunctional. Magically but. put it back on again. <laughs> yeah. Which 
I come from an Italian family. Honestly, all of that sounds pretty par for the course. None of that's out of the ordinary. All of those things are on the table at any given holiday. So Sure. I, yeah. That guy's suit's amazing. Uh, I love New York. <laughs> love it. Wow. Love it. That is, that is and that is a moment in time that we all just had together. <laughs> all right, before I get into this is my last Halloween question before we get into the show. Your show's coming out on Halloween weekend. Do any of you have big Halloween plans? Is there any fun things for Halloween? I think we should try to get together. I do. You I think we should watch we, the show yeah. over and over again. <laughs> but we've Bias. talked about like switching switching characters for <laughs> Halloween. The ultimate cosplay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You guys have yeah. to do that for the next con, is go in the character that you don't play. Like, that's what you have to do. We did talk well, about it. Yeah. Well, this I, year I, I did Olivia. Deadpool. <laughs> All right. Done. This year I did Deadpool. I think, I think I might go as the cat. There you go. Brilliant. Mr. Snuggly is his name. Yeah. Oh, my God. That, I'm, I'm on board. I'd love to see that. Just to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what you're saying is you want to see me with hair. I want to see yeah. I mean, let's not say you should. The little pointy ears are going to be adorable as well. You're an imposing figure to see you as an adorable cat. It's just a great juxtaposition. I'm on board. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. Very Thank tall you. furry. Yeah. Very tall furry, yeah. Well. I'm pretty sure the audience is with me. Wouldn't we, don't we want to see him as a cat? Don't we? And we're out. What else no can you do? No longer about me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I went as Deadpool at, well, no. I did a tribute to Deadpool at Comic-Con. Yeah. So I think the natural next step is to be a character. Yeah, you but I had a lot of fun being Deadpool. Yeah, that's, that's also, there's like some connective tissue there. I feel like Olivia's mentor yeah. in life is Deadpool. Exactly, like there's, you, know you could mean? draw a line there. That, that kind of makes like sense. Like a direct arrow. Like, exactly. Like goals. Like, <laughs> direct, yeah. That's pretty amazing. All right, well, let's let's talk about season two, guys. I'm, I'm so excited. I mentioned this briefly uh, in the introduction, but uh, it is a big part of it, as we saw in the cliffhanger from season one. The threat, it's no longer below. That's where it was in season one, and we were keeping the threat at bay. The threat kind of came through. But now it's literally in your backyard, and it exists within this already tight-knit uh, community. What, what has in that... The new hotel. In the new hotel. In your bedroom. Yeah, it's exactly. Or in it's our blood. blood. You're in your blood, yeah. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna unpack all of that. <laughs> we're gonna unpack all of that. Have so many taglines for you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, let's talk just broad broad strokes first. What does that do to to the 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 energy of the town? What does that do to to the everybody's the way in which they interact and interplay? Knowing is there a heightened sense of paranoia? Is there a, a higher awareness of, of what's going on now? And and just the excitement of diving into that. Yeah, I think the fact that there's a new hotel in town is uh, just gives a totally different vibe to midnight. Um, there's it's not a one stop town anymore. The, there's hipsters in search for meaning, uh, and um, it, it makes it pretty exciting and, and and makes way for tons of new characters to you know come in as owners of the hotel, but also patrons and yeah. creeps. And it's good because it brings in an external element into our dynamic. And whereas we all bonded over the fight last season, this is going to start tearing at us and see if we can survive that. Yeah. Like real family. Exactly. Well, yeah, in, in, a, in a town and an environment that is so uh, cautious of outsiders, like here is a building devoted to attracting as many outsiders as possible <laughs> like and bringing yeah. them into midnight. And encroaching on Fiji's business. Precisely. And, you know, this, generally we're suspicious of new people, but they come in with some very interesting um, quirks, yeah. shall we say, and folks definitely need to immediately start investigating. Yeah. One of my favorite scenes in the one of my first favorite scenes in the first episode is Olivia investigating. We're the Scooby Doo gang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Giants. That's what we should go as in next Comic Con. There you go. Yes. 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 We, we already have the van. Yes. 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 We found it. So we're abandoning the cat idea. Is that what I'm hearing? I'm just thank goodness. <laughs> no, but there is a dog. There you can be the dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you're Scooby. Yeah, you're. You're, yeah. you're not getting out of this without some kind of adorable set of ears and a furry jumpsuit. What's That's happening. with the ears? It's part of it. I didn't decide that. <laughs> You're an ears man. I'm, a, you're an not, ears man. I'm not not an ears man. I'll tell you that. You're a I'm shoe man. Perfect canvas. I can tell by your cool <laughs> 
Um, you know, it's great to, to mention like your favorite part of an episode. I love uh, finding out uh, what excited you most. You know, Francois, we, we briefly touched on the, the black goo that seems to be pouring out of the various orifices on, <laughs> on you in this, on this show. Very unpleasant. Very unsettling. Uh, obviously, I, for one, as a viewer, did not trust those demons to completely exit or vacate the premises at the end of whatever the plan was. You're I was like, smarter man, than Manfred. <laughs> just really rolling the dice here. But uh, whatever it is, I don't know how much you can or can't reveal. As you started to get into how this residual uh, evil or leftover impact was going to manifest itself, was that an exciting thing that you were going to get to tackle? That I mean, totally. One of the most exciting things about Manfred from season one is that I get to play different characters and get out of my comfort zone and go from yeah. uh, you know experiencing life as Manfred and then and then just throwing myself into a completely different character for the possession scenes but um um you, the way demon cancer as we should call it affects uh, Manfred uh it's just like uh, I I got to channel um the Jack Nicholson in me <laughs> for the first episode and that was just you know Unexpected and amazing. I assume uh, Jack Nicholson, of course, from uh, when he played uh, and as good as it gets, because yes, I think that's, yes, that. <laughs> that's the one. That, Dave, Dave. Yeah. That's the one that you want to bring into this role. Real demonic. Uh, that's really fascinating, though. So were you actually like just based on memories of, of Jack's performance and I assume The Shining? Uh, or, uh, or were you watching like almost like game footage, like going back, like let me find my favorite crazy people and de demonic personalities and try to pull that in? Um... I, well, you know, I wasn't, I, I, I'm not doing a Jack Nicholson no, impression. No, I, I didn't mean to but, uh, an impression, uh, but like you gotta seek inspiration yeah. somewhere because there's no real life example of what a person does necessarily. When you they haven't have seen him cancer. before coffee in the morning though. <laughs> I mean, you just <laughs> throw, yeah. No, okay. no just get it. Um, you know, the, I, I just think it's, it's all in the script, right? We, ha we had the new exciting showrunners who were um, um, very ambitious, I think, in, in the mythology they created for season two. Um, the second half of the season is absolutely insane and thrilling and ends up, you know, making sense somehow. Um, <laughs> somehow. Yeah, it does. No, it always um, works out. And I think we go to really unexpected um, places this year, uh, creatively and literally. Yeah. Um, and that just made it, I, that was enough to draw inspiration from, really. Yeah. For sure. I'm, I'm really excited to, it's such an ensemble, you guys are all amazing on this show, and I'm so excited to see Thank you. just, Thank uh, you. yeah, you, you do a great job of fleshing out these characters and seeing how they all sort of react to the fallout and the new things. You know, uh, Olivia and Lem, the newlyweds, right? Honeymoon phase. Yes, honey. Right? Yes, dear. So that's exciting. That's a, that's a fun and sometimes stressful period of life in general, full stop. Now we've got uh, all these new outside forces, your various abilities and, and whatnot. What, what, is, what is married life like on the other side in season two? How's it, how's it been for you guys? Take it, dear. <laughs> really, honey? Um, yeah, I think the, the um, marriage is probably hard enough, but in Midnight, it's marriage between a vampire and a human being. We know how that goes. <laughs> it, there's certainly going to be some problems there. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, so apart from sort of the normal problems you'd have anyway as a newly married couple. Um, challenges, not Yes, dear, problems. challenges. Um, yeah. Yeah. If your wife honey. happens to be a, uh, an assassin. Um, you don't want problems. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and because you're connected, you can actually... Uh, feel her thoughts and emotions and react to them, there's a certain point at which she's not going to like you very much. Yeah. Carry on, dear. <laughs> um, but the, you know, getting married for Olivia was something she never thought would ever, ever, ever happen. So, you know, at the end of season one, she has this line like, you know, you dead guy, you made me feel again. And I think it's so beautiful and so ironic. And so we, we do pick up where we left off with them. And um, I think the biggest thing for not only episode one, but throughout the season, the theme of Olivia and Olivia and Lim together is she has a very troubled past. You know, we learn more about her past and more about her wounds in this season. But more than anything, we see her ask herself the question, am I ready to let go? And am I ready to let go of the past to embrace what's happening here? Because I can choose to live there or I can choose to build something, but I don't have room for both, yeah. you know? And so her father 
there is a confrontation with her father, which is huge, and with the Midnighter support. And it was something that in reading the script, I was very, very excited about for Olivia, but also excited to explore because I think we all have that moment where we go, oh my God, I have this wound that I just, it's so deep in me. I don't know, I don't know me without that wound. And yet I have something new that I'd rather do instead. And so how do I start living more there? And, and I think that's what we see through the season with the two of us. And I think it's really special. I'm always, it sounds very special for the record. I'm always curious Thanks. about. About those cat ears. No, no. I'm, I'm past that. I stopped thinking about those. I, uh, I'm always very curious about, especially when, um, when you have a character, how much of that backstory that we get to see did you know already, even from, from day one of your work on the project? Because I, I wonder uh, when a show does something like that, if you're unaware of said backstory at the beginning, once you become aware of it, does it call into question decisions you made before or, or make you question your performance? Like, oh, I wish I knew that that's where that was coming from and stuff like that. So I, right. I guess to condense that into a question is how much of that did you know already? and did it influence uh, your feelings on any of your past performances? Yeah, um, I knew enough, meaning I read Charlene's books, yeah. and I so I knew the wounds that Olivia was carrying in the sense that I knew I had this responsibility right. to explore, to get in touch with those moments in my own life that maybe are not the same as hers, but had the same impact on me. What am I carrying with me? What secrets am I carrying with me today that make me strong on the outside, but broken on the inside? And I think that's also a theme that we all share. Yeah. And so that part I knew, because I knew that was my job, bringing this character forward, is anytime she's being sarcastic or funny or strong, there's always more to it. There's never one layer to anyone. Um, the flip side is that's it because in life we don't get to know more than this moment until the next moment and then the next moment and the next moment and when we know then is that we've lived all of this. So I choose not to know more than I need to because to me that's life. You don't plan it, you live it. That, uh, that's, that raises a great question. So I know you've read, I know where you stand on that show of hands. Who did the reading for class? Who did, did everybody do the reading? <laughs> did we all do the reading? Okay. <laughs> Do you share... Uh, Who cheated? <laughs> Did you do the reading? <laughs> Cheater. <laughs> oh, no, but there's... Don't look at me. Yeah, it's, it's different, though, right? Because it does call into question of how much do you want to know going in, you know? Do you want to know where it's going to land, and, and does that... Uh, I, I think it's about making strong choices, but, yeah. but, but keeping an open mind uh, to what can possibly change and, and what can be revealed to... Revealed to you about about your about the character by new information, and sometimes like we people have we have breakthroughs in real life. <laughs> yeah. We hope. You know, so, sometimes an event will shine a light on something you didn't you weren't aware of about your own past, and so I think that's the that's the way I go about it. Yeah, I, th I think that's a really good point because you don't. I personally like to know the whole story as much as I can so you can create some sort of an arc with the character to service the story. But what he just said, it's like this new information doesn't have to refute everything. It just puts a new skew on how you think of things. And our writers have been incredibly intuitive in their process. I've been shocked so many times to see them come up with things that I'm like, wait, but I I put that into my own little secret backstory for this character. How did it pop up in your writer's room? But they pay attention and they see what you're doing. They do, and, yeah. you know? So I, it's, I, anytime something new has come up, it's felt like it fit perfectly. And um, and so it's it's like, it's, a, it's pleasant to be surprised by anything that wasn't already in the books. It sounds like a really lovely experience. It's that amazing. You guys have a it great sucked. relationship. It's, yeah. Yeah, no. no, but like there's just an incredible... <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> there's also bribery. We sent them yeah, off There's a little bit of that. The usual, you know. Um, the usual stuff yeah, you'd but expect. We have really an incredible experience here of like a family, yeah. both, you know, in front of the camera and behind the camera. And, you know, n nothing in life is perfect. We all have our challenges, but there's just been this like really beautiful cohesiveness that I think, you know, ends up on screen. Yeah. 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 
you know, you speak about uh, just the beautiful family that you guys have formed and, and everybody working together. One one of the uh, other aspects of that family is this show just straight up looks amazing. Uh, the, the So I, there's a whole other part of that family working on that and, and doing a phenomenal job. And you see they're pouring love into it as well. Uh, the sets are fantastic. The makeup is, is great. The effects are really cool. How I Mike imagine Sprague is our DP. Yeah. Hi, Mike. <laughs> and, and, and He's in Europe. Europe. The whole practical effects team is incredible. I mean, there's a yeah. fair amount of good CGI, but like what we actually get to work with on the day is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, our props are... what, what, what are you thinking of that's making you do that oh, right now? The creepy crawling? The recoiling in fear. Things, multiple things. Because the, the things that they make, what they make them out of, they make them out of this like special silicone, so they also feel real. So you're dealing with like bodies or body parts or or additional parts of your own body that feel real. Slow down, Parisa. Them. This is a children's show. <laughs> Don't give it all away. No, but you know, like there's whenever we have to do something, they the detail is so incredible that just like right up close, down to wow. like the veins and people under people's skin, it looks real. Um, so I know I've walked up on dead bodies on accident, like in the parking lot. Children's show. Someone is just. <laughs> They're fake dead bodies. You just they're touch them to see if you poke um, them, see if they're real. Well, I mean, I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> this is the turning Scooby the corner gang. and an extra alone. or a prop. <laughs> Who knows? It can be. It can be very scary. You'd be scared too. We really need the Scooby Doo episode where we, we just really do. we pull the mask off the bad guy and he's like. <laughs> So and a musical episode. I just want to put that. But up. also, really quickly, we shout out, episode. shout out to Liz Animated too, episode. because we're talking about how we're all a family. But I feel like Liz has become a part of the family too. Very much so. So we're Liz is my girl. Yeah, uh, and we, we are. We're in a very special circumstance with our job. Any workplace you go to, because it's your job. This is one that's it's been so healthy and fun and collaborative, and not just with us, but like you're saying, part of the, the game. FX team with the the producers, the directors. It's 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 a really kind of a special world. Midnight. It's pretty awesome, uh, and you feel a lot of that on screen, and you see a lot of that effort and that love. Speaking of what things are made of, what's what's the what's the black goo made of? What's come? What is that? You got a lot of that. Black goo. <laughs> just black goo. Uh, it's quite minty, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not bad. No way. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. I got a little bit look, here. He's, yeah, he's walking around. Yeah, I'll take, yeah. <laughs> I want to see what's up with the black goo. Guys, I made a 